Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Aloha, everyone. We've got a special show for you today. I got a friend of mine who agreed to come here and do a little <laughs> reminiscing. And I'd like all of you, if you don't already know who he is, to meet Charlie Taguchi, who was a uh, state senator for a number of years and represented, uh, represented the uh, windward side of the island. Well, you're also in the state house, so yes. you're a boat. And, but what's, what uh, the reason for inviting Charlie was that during my entire tenure as governor, Charlie, you were superintendent of schools. So our adventure together in education spanned uh, my tenure in office. So that would be eight years. In fact, I don't know any other superintendent who served eight years. Do you? Well, Governor, uh, thank you for having, <laughs> me, for having me on this program. Uh, it reminds me uh, a lot of our old times uh, together. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't know anybody who served as well as you. So, Charlie, you, you are one of my favorite cabinet members. So I want to invite you back. Yeah. Okay. And I want to talk story with you a little bit about what we were trying to do in, in uh, education, how the educational system works today, and maybe some of the successes that we can see as, uh, uh, f uh, uh, as people go about the work of educating our young people in this day and age. So first of all, you worked with an elected board. Yes. Uh, how is that? Uh, I, I mean, you know, it seemed like it was a pretty political process. Yeah. Governor, it was uh, very challenging because all of the board members were elected. So politicians. They were all politicians. And, <laughs> and, and you and I being elected officials. We also. Know, we, 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 yeah, also, we know how politicians can right. be. Right. And uh, so, uh, but, but when you compare that to today, if, if we look at when we were there and today, I would say uh, we have a great Board of Education now. The Board of Education now is, uh, is an, uh, appointed. Right. And right. I think the law passed in 2011. Right. And by and the way, the law, the change in the law was, was uh, really um, uh, supported by yes. all the governors. Yes. Uh, the, the incumbent, I think, at that time was... Uh, was it Neil or, or Neil? It was Neil, Neil Abercrombie. Governor Abercrombie. Hey, but uh, Linda Lingo, who was a Republican, yes. supported it. I supported it. Yes. Uh, ben Caetano yes. and Governor Ryoshi. Yes. So they, the and governors of the state, anyway, believed that an elected board would be better for education. And and because of I the, mean, a appointed board. Yes, and because of that uh, appointed board, the governor makes the appointment. And the current board is a very good board because of the appointments that Governor Ige has made. All right. uh, we have a cross-section of outstanding educators. Uh, uh, we're getting, uh, I think, uh, two of, of the best coming in, uh, um, a former principal of, of Farrington High School. Uh, really? Yeah, Kathy. Um, I can't think of her last name now, but Wait, was she? I remember her. She was the. She really turned around Farrington. It yes. Was, yes. You know, fantastic. In fact, in fact, she's going to be the chair of the board. Oh, terrific! Yeah. You know, I, I, I believe this, and I've thought, I've expressed this thought that uh, you know we got a lot of capable teachers out there, and and they work hard. But what makes what takes a school that extra notch? It's just that little is is the quality of the principal. I mean, understanding uh, how to administer a school is is a challenge. You know. Yeah, I I, I think I think with the the current board, um, and and the governor working together, they've created a situation where they're trying to empower the schools, and and in a school like that, you need a good leader. Uh, right. as, as you said, a, a good principal, and uh, and that empowerment, uh, I, I think the governor has offered uh, the schools the, the flexibility that they need. So at that point, it becomes the governor's role is to support the school, uh, provide them with resources, uh, provide them with 
with the support that they need. And, and, and get the right people in the right places. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and uh, in the 19, um, I think it was 1986, um, uh, David Ige uh, was chair of the House Committee and Mike McCartney was chair of the Senate Committee, Education Committee. Right. And at that time, they passed Act 150. And so what you see, the movement today that you see in the schools are based on that Act 150. That's right. Remember, you and I used to have so many discussions. Right. And, and it's so wonderful to yeah. see, you know, uh, how history comes together. Right. Because you remember, we, we uh, what was it called? School-based, community school-based management. Yeah. Right? Which is, we was attempt to empower uh, the schools. We were trying to, we were playing around with the idea. And the current governor... Uh, David Ige was the uh, chair, and the education chair in the House, House. and uh, Mike McCartney, who is his chief of staff right now, was the, the chair of the Senate committee. Yes, in, in you know in the yes. Senate, and so y you had to go down there, and you and I had had these long and discussions. And Francis McMillan. Francis McMillan <laughs> was the chair of the Board of right. Education, right. which, by the way, was not necessarily in tune with some of the things that we, you know yes. were attempted to do. Yeah. So David, uh, Governor Egan now, and uh, Chief of Staff Mike McCartney. Actually, we're in on the beginning yes. of the idea of returning yes. uh, the, I guess you would call it the governance, yes. back to the community yes. and the uh, teachers. Yes. And, uh, wow. And, and if you look at the current superintendent, uh, Dr. Kishimoto, right. if you look at her priorities, her priorities are uh, uh, teacher empowerment, uh, student involvement, and uh, school design. By school design, what she's talking about uh, is how we organize the school to empower the school. Well, Charlie, and, you, you, you were superintendent. You're an educator. So I may not be getting this. So why don't you go a little bit deeper into this idea of school design? I mean, wh what exactly uh, does that mean in terms of the people on the ground? I think it's the recognition that those on the front line, those in the schools every day know best what's best for the, for the youngsters. And it's, it's involvement of the entire community, not only the teachers, but the, the parents and the students. Well, I, I've heard and, it said that without the parents' support, it's exactly, very difficult. Exactly. And, and, and it's not the top-down... Uh, you know, uh, the way we were taught a long time right, ago. Right, right. Uh, and, 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 and so schools are, are getting empowered now. I see good things happening in our schools today. I think Kathy Matayoshi did a good job and, and then carry over to this superintendent. Well, I think that uh, that transition was, a, was, a great, was, a, was handled very well. Yes. And the, this current superintendent seems to be uh, very creative. I mean, I, I, I don't know, uh, per, you know, very personally, but she seemed to be very creative in, in following that path. Yeah, I, I have, I'm sitting here having fond memories of you and I sitting at my, in my governor's office. It was like two weeks before, oh no, like several days before the state of the state. And I, I, I'm saying, Charlie, we got it. I got to get this down to a point that I can talk about it. And now to realize that we got a governor and a superintendent actually carrying out what to us was a little foggy vision. Yeah. It's kind of exciting. I think, I think when we were there, like, you know, governor was been uh, over 25 years ago that we left. So if you back that up eight years, so it's like over 30 years ago right. when, when we talked about uh, empowering the schools and, and it's, it took others yeah. uh, to, and you to, know, com to complete this full circle. And I'm very hopeful today because... I, I don't know if you, if you feel the same way I do, but when I, when I hear about that, when I see that happening, I mean, it's like it makes you really proud and it also makes you realize that, you know, there are other people that can pick up the ball and run with it yeah. and do a fantastic job. And, yeah. and, and so I, I believe, I believe that uh, from what I little, little I know of what's going on now, I, I find out by reading the paper and, you right, know, right. talking to people. But I, I feel that uh, the schools are heading in the right direction. I think our, 
uh, policymakers are understanding what their roles are, the governor and the legislature, and uh, rather than prescribing that, for example, that we want to teach foreign language and uh, to, to get a top-down mandate that you are to teach foreign language at every school, it's better to pass a resolution in the legislature requesting that the Board of Education consider teaching, right, 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 teaching right. and leave the decision, the education decision. What to, language, to, for example? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and how, how, yeah, and how they do it, you know, how... Well, well that, that's kind of interesting because, you know, we, all of us, many of us anyway, we have all heard of the Democratic Revolution in terms of how the Democratic Party really democratized Hawaii in, in the 50s and the 60s, mainly with the uh, return of the, uh, of the Nisei from World War II and so forth. This, these things are legend in Hawaii. But the, in back then, what the school system seemed to exist um, with a lot of, uh, I would say, discrimination. Uh, there were English only or English Standard. proper standard schools, and there were other schools where kids that may came may have come from a different background weren't given the same quality of education as others. I mean, even there was, uh, during that dark era, there was support for the private schools at the expense of the public school. Oh, things were bad. So the revolution brought in the concept of everybody was going to be equally treated. Everybody was going to be equally treated, which was a good thing for its day. Uh, but then I heard the governor say something recently, which I totally agree with, by the way. And I thought uh, we might want to discuss that. He said we are no longer we are no longer going to say that one size fits all. Exactly. You know. Yes. The kids are different. They're all different. And and. And I think every child is ent entitled to, to the best education that they can get, and it's not always the same education. Right, right. And, and so and that it, what that means then is that the kids on Kauai may have something to contribute to their own education that is different from somebody in Mo'ili'ili, for exactly. example. Exactly. You know, and, yeah. and we need to recognize their contributions as well as, you know, the circumstances in life. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I'm fascinated. I, I, he said that. He says, you know, we, we, we don't have a one system fits all process anymore. We are going to uh, recognize that uh, each child has a different rate and and you think that's a good thing right? yes I'm assuming. Well, definitely yeah definitely. because you know I what what I, I I think I can see is with there seems to be when you approach education in that way there seems to be a kind of excitement about it it's not dull, you know, it's not made for the lowest common denominator. It's made for the person wherever they are. And, um, you know, we're going to take a, a break in a little while. And when we come back, let's focus on that. Let's focus okay. on what's happening now in education that appears to be exciting. To a couple old timers. Okay. A couple old, we had our shot. You know, <laughs> our job was we believed, I believe, till today, that the center of our future was the public school system. Oh, there's, there's no question. You know, and, and I know that you believe that as well. And, with, and that's uh, how we build Hawaii's future. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, um, we'll talk about the governor. And uh, we'll, maybe we start off with a promise that he made. Okay. You know, if we start off with a promise that he made, he promised that he was going to air condition schools. Okay. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. 
Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every other week, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., we have guests on and talk about the fascinating, interesting, and unique partnerships in education that occur across the Pacific Islands with Hawaii, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Guam, all these places have really rich local education programs going on, and the exchange among and between these programs is a wealth of great information, helping the islands all learn how to survive and thrive in our ever-changing world. I hope you'll join us on Pacific Partnerships in Education. Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahei and my very special guest and good friend, Charlie Taguchi, former state senator, former superintendent of schools, all around guy committed to education, not only as a part of his career, but just, uh, you know, just uh, in general. By the way, folks, if you want to ask a question, you may not have a chance to do it in any other forum, but if you want to ask former superintendent Charles, Charlie Taguchi a question, call us at 808-374-2014. Eight zero eight three seven four two zero one four. Well, Charlie, just before the break, we started talking about uh, Governor Ige's promise. He made a very interesting promise during the campaign. He said that, or, or maybe it was right after the campaign. I, I'm not sure of the timing, but I know he made a promise, and he said, "I intend to uh, air condition." Air condition a thousand rooms in the school district, and, and you know, and for maybe, maybe, maybe for the average person, what air conditioned rooms? I mean, uh, I never had air condition, you know, when I, like that. But when he made that promise, I remember another episode you and I had, <laughs> and you took me out to Nanakuli, Nanakuli. Um, I guess it was, well, it was intermediate and high. And we walked around the school, and you took me in the classrooms, and the place was stifling. It was so hot. And you told me, we got, Governor, we got to have some air conditioning. These kids are not learning in this time. And it was obvious that education couldn't take place. And yet, we, uh, we couldn't pull it off. And, 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 and this is why Governor was very interesting when Governor Ige said he was going to air condition us. Yeah, as a I said, well, I couldn't and, do it. And, how, can, you know, how are you going to do it? We couldn't find the money to, to air condition the schools at that time. And uh, so it was very interesting that the governor was able to do it. And he, not only a thousand schools, but I think he's at 1,300 today. And I think one thing that we never thought of at that time was that. We couldn't do it because of the cost, but... Yeah, the cost, by the way, it, it wasn't the cost of the air conditioning. Exactly. See, that's what people people got. And I remember when when you told me that, I said, yeah, get, I can, we can buy air conditioning. Right. You know, air conditioners, well, they may not be as neat, as, as nice as they are today, but yes. they were good air conditioners back then. The real cost... It was Hawaiian Electric. It was the electric bill. <laughs> bill. And by the way, I'm not knocking Hawaiian Electric. I'm just saying that the cost of right. electricity in Hawaii okay. is not one of our great uh, selling points. But nevertheless, so when we, you, when we add it up, but we even had people volunteering, by the way, to buy the air conditioners, the actual machines. Yes. But the one nut that we could not crack it was the cost of operating. Exactly. Now, how did David uh, Ige solve that problem? Technology. He's, a, he's an engineer. Okay. okay. He's an electrical engineer. Okay. And so today, technology, solar. Um, and so it is alternative energy. Alternative energy. Completely different from our days. And uh, so costs have come down. And uh, the monthly bills, I think, in fact, I think with... Renewables, many, it's cheaper. Yeah, probably. yeah, oh, it's cheaper. Wow, it's cheaper. And but the more important, well, just as importantly, uh, in my opinion, uh, are the testimonials that are coming out as a result of it. I mean, people, 
people are actually, in fact, there was young, one young person, I, I, I remember, who uh, made a statement, something along the lines that the air-conditioned classroom really um, contributed an extra month to his education because it was so hot during a certain period of the year that really there was a month mm -hmm. off. Nobody mm -hmm. could learn in that mm -hmm. circumstances. That's right. And, 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 and you know, I think, I think with technology today, I think a lot of things are possible, not only in terms of air conditioning uh, to give uh, the students a more conducive learning environment, but I think technology is, is the way uh, to learn also. And, yeah, it's a learning, yeah. it's a learning mechanism. I right. mean, there's this inter... I, I, I don't understand it, John. So you're right, an educator. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're an educator. You, you may be able to explain this to me. But there is this necessity, really, for an interaction with machines that uh, we didn't have yes. or we, yes. we were not aware of. You know, I, I watch these kids um, going around with their tablets iPads and iPads yeah. and, yes. and I've heard that in many for many children um, if you don't know how to use uh, which is in fact which is in fact a computer when you enter school mm -hmm. you really start falling behind yes you know and, and, and so this is why uh, many schools are I think with the support of the policymakers like the governor legislature they're getting more and more uh, iPads and computers into schools uh, because that's how you, you learn and you work out in the community. And, and more and more, I think, uh, they're, tr they're bringing the community into the schools and the businesses and et cetera. Because what is education? Education is to prepare our youngsters. Right to be productive citizens, to get a good job, and to be able to take care of their families. Uh, you know, and it's, it's amazing because, um, y you know, my wife is totally committed to, uh, oh, yes. uh, you know, reading, and reading to youngsters and having youngsters read and, and adults and the rest. And I, we often have this discussion. She and I come from a generation, we love books. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just love books. I cannot throw away a book. Uh, <laughs> she has to sneak around and sell it at one of her book sales, <laughs> you know, just steal it from me. But I keep thinking and I keep telling her, you say, you know, the machines of the future, because I have a Kindle. And I re which I you know read all the mm -hmm. time. I said this is a machine, and I'm reading it like a book. And I keep many books in this machine. Yes. And you can't take it away from yeah. me. Well, all these kids are doing that. Mm -hmm. By the mm -hmm. way, just as an aside, the person who got me started reading on a Kindle was your old buddy. Governor Caetano. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had my kids bought me this Kindle, yeah. and I, I could never bring myself to you know play with it. <laughs> and when I ran into Ben once, and he and I said, and he had one. And I said, how do you you find it? Yeah, it's terrific. Uh -huh. And so I figured, you know, the one thing I didn't want to have in life was for him to be more technologically advanced than I. So yeah. I learned how to use yeah. the Kindle. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I wanted to, to, to mention this to you. You know, the, well, the, the governor, uh, Ige, worked his way through high school by, right. I mean, by working at the right. cannery. Right. And that's how he went to college. He got. He went to a public school, by the way. He graduated yep. Pearl City High School. Pearl City High and, School. And, you guys and, ought to be very proud. And there's of an the interesting government. story about him. He he applied to major colleges throughout the nation. Did he get accepted to MIT? And, yes. And, yes. And, and I don't know some other real. Yes. But but he didn't tell his parents. <laughs> he didn't tell his yeah, parents because he had all these brothers. I think he's got like four brothers, and. He didn't put any, want to place any hardship on his parents. If he went to a school on the mainland, you know, oh, he, the cost of doing the cost it. of that. Uh, so he went to a good school. He went to the University of Hawaii, Hawaii. <laughs> and, and came out as a lecturer. Well, you know, I think but, that's a good thing. Yeah, and that has left an imprint on the governor, and this is why yeah. he is involved in programs like Hawaii Promise. Explain Hawaii Promise real quick. Yeah. Let's get that out there. Yeah, I, we're, this is a great, well, great uh, note. They just they just signed a bill recently, 
uh, they augmented the program with an additional, I think, half a million dollars. This is like they, a scholarship program exactly. for students, yeah. right? They want to guarantee that a youngster who, who, who prepares himself and want to go to college, that money is not going to come in the way. Okay. You know, that, that's fantastic. And, then, and, and the, the governor also started the program that allowed students that are currently in high school to take college classes. Yes. Uh, example of that was at Wai, Wai Pao High School. Right. Where we just uh, had 12 students graduate from college before they graduated from high school. From, exactly. Uh, well, with an associate arts degree. Yeah. They, they had their graduation recently, I think last week. Right. And when they graduated at Wai Pao High School. They had, the week before, they had already graduated from... Uh, they had their AA. You're right. And Which is fantastic. Yeah, because what that will do, it'll save you two years of tuition at the University of Hawaii. Because community college, two years, you can apply it to University of Hawaii. Right. And okay, University of Hawaii's tuition now is about $12,000 a year. So $24,000 yeah. got saved. Exactly. Because the kids that from high school that take these college classes that work to an right. associate, they do it for free, right? Yeah. And, 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 and this and, is one of his, his programs, yes. I mean. And the amazing thing about that is that kids they can still, students, they can still go to high school and at the same time, they're capable of earning their college degree. You know, I, I, you know we talk about these programs uh, in the sense of how much money they save the parents, and that is important. Believe me, I remember when my son came back from the mainland and said, Daddy, I only want to go to the University of Hawaii. <laughs> I think, you know, the powers that be that I can finally afford it and say, you know, this, you know what it was like. Yeah. But... What's really interesting to me is seeing the impact on the student for somebody who's gone out there who has earned college degree. You know what that does to somebody's confidence mm -hmm. and the ability to believe in themselves? That's a fantastic program. You just about guarantee their success. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, I tell you what. What's interesting and exciting is that the principal at Waipahu High School is so excited about this program. He's encouraging every student in his school to take advantage of it. And uh, you, the societal impact of having students being able to go to college that would not have been done, uh, otherwise, uh, done otherwise is fantastic. You are breaking the chains of poverty. You are creating opportunities that don't exist. It's exciting. It's and, exciting. And I just want to say before we get off the air that we have good public schools. Good and if, public schools and good public school teachers. Exactly. And and if you if you have a concern, and to the audience I would say if you have a concern, get involved because the schools will welcome you, your involvement. Well, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. It's thank you. two guys from the past <laughs> reminding everybody about what a great Hawaii we have. Thank Aloha. you. Thank you, Governor.